Good afternoon, everybody. Um, today, I will share with you my journey of an outsider. I work in the fashion industry, and I pretty much pursue all the activities of a designer. We do biannual shows in Paris. We have our own temporary spaces. I spend a lot of time in fittings. However, I'm a bit of a misfit in the fashion industry because while, whilst I run a commercial business, I also embody the art world, make films and installations, and I show them in galleries and museums. Interestingly, this condition has given me the freedom to be an immigrant within various disciplines, fusing unlikely worlds and cultures. And this has helped me to embrace dualities in my own life and in my work. And many of the work I'll be sharing with you today wouldn't be possible had I not worked in this way. This picture, age 11, in my room in Cyprus, probably marks the roots of my outside the condition. Uh, you can see the book in the corner which represents my obsession with technology based on aircraft. You can see the, the white desk, which was the first piece I was lucky enough to design. And my interest in the world of women is marked by the dressing table in the corner that belonged to my stepsister. These are some of the titles I'll be uh, sharing with you today that inform the work. And I'll first start with separation. When I was seven, I was sent to England from North Cyprus to study in boarding school, and I pretty much felt separated from my mother. I felt I was too young to really go abroad. And in those days, uh, it was very expensive to communicate by telephone, so we used to write aerogram letters to each other. Many years later, I decided to look at this uh, situation and created the airmail clothing series, uh, which is a dress you can write on, you can spray perfume on, you can wear, you can wash. And I liked here the idea that you can send a dress to a loved one, and maybe this dress can become a token for your absence or your presence. Unlike a dress that you can send by mail, uh, this was a dress I covered in iron filings, and I buried it in the ground for several months. And after I dug out the dress, uh, I felt that the dress actually acquired its own life and became what I call a piece of future archaeology. Here, I was interested in the idea that a garment that has a certain value now could become part of an archaeological archive of the future. During the atrocities in Cyprus in the 60s between Greek and Turkish Cypriots, uh, my mother's uh, family had a warning that there was going to be a raid in her area. And many years later, I asked her, what was the first thing you thought about taking with you at that moment in time? And she said to me, old photographs and food. Then I decided to look at this idea and take it a lot further, and I started to look at how you could carry your possessions with you much more efficiently. So I looked at how you can transform furniture in order that you can carry them away quickly at the time of war. And this led to this next piece I'll show you.
So, uh, talking about having to move out of your home at the time of war and the displacement that creates. Uh, the next film is a meditation on how much moving around and the isolation this is creating. Uh, the journey starts from London and goes to Istanbul, uh, ends in the Bosphorus, which, en which divides Asia and Europe. Another aspect of our lives which I find fascinating is the speed in which our lives are evolving, from the speed of the body to the speed of consumption to the economy. And Inertia, the next project, uh, starts off with uh, the crystallized uh, moment of a crash as a result of speed. Uh, this is in a gallery environment, then in a fashion show, And this is its most commercial and, uh, let's say, accessible uh, ramification, uh, swift shoe with de developed with Puma. This idea is probably a very good example of how uh, one thought can lead to three forms of expression in a gallery environment, fashion show, and uh, as an accessible, uh, usable uh, product. Going from speed, one of the most modern experiences in the world, uh, the next project is about looking at the past and how religious ideals of the past has been replaced by our obsession with lifestyle. In Dolce Far Niente, uh, I looked at juxtaposing uh, an ethereal image of the body inspired by Jacob's Ladder, hence the hands climbing up the body, and uh, looked at how I could fuse that with uh, image of the body from the French Riviera from the 60s. I was raised by women, so for me, in my fashion, it's very important to empower women, uh, and the kind of woman that I project is, is a woman that's self-confident and uh, who is not an object and who doesn't have to hide behind her clothes. Here, the, the uh, peeping lady is hiding behind the clothes, but in fact, she was uh, merged with the folds in the garments. Okay. So, uh, in I'm Sad Leila, uh, you will see uh, the previous image from Dolce Far Niente, and here, the Turkish singer, Sertab Erener, is actually wearing a piece of clothing from the previous fashion show that you saw. Uh, this is a 3D print of her, uh, done five years ago, and it took us actually three days to print, unlike uh, some of the uh, demonstrations uh, earlier in the week. And uh, I wanted to really uh, say that music is a very big source of inspiration for me, because I find that uh, it's the most profound uh, kind of, uh, let's say, experience we could have, and visual people try to create the same effect, but I feel they, nev they can never really create the same impact. Here, I look at Turkish classical music, uh, because this music is evolved from the cross-pollination of many cultures in that region. 
And I'll show you an excerpt from this project. As a three-year-old, I was obsessed with the Bionic Man, and at that time, I was in, I was in London with my parents. And um, my father said to me that we were going to actually go and visit the Bionic Man, and as Turkish Cypriots never go empty-handed, I would also take uh, some Turkish delight for him. And uh, we drove from Finchley, North London, to Madame Tussauds. And because, as a three-year-old, I have no concept of, uh, of distance and time. I actually thought we drove to America to see Steve Austin. <laughs> and this project uh, next is probably the, uh, is the reason why um, I actually um, went ahead, because I was interested in technology from that age, and I guess uh, interested in the apparent impossibility of technology. Uh, for this project, 111, uh, I wanted to make dresses that could run themselves, a bit, bit like bionic dresses. And uh, thematically, I wanted to look at uh, maybe how the environment could affect the image of the body. For instance, have wars have, have uh, led to a disempowered or an empowered image of the body, or how movements have led to a liberated image of the body. Here, I worked with uh, people from many different disciplines, mechanical engineers, uh, programmers, people that had never worked on projects like this before. And we developed uh, six dresses, uh, I will share with you five of them, uh, which uh, morphed mechanically to, to actually mark uh, a change of an era in each dress. And you will, you will see an excerpt of this as the finale of the show. Being an immigrant within uh, different disciplines has allowed me to discover worlds that I wouldn't have never discovered otherwise. And I've learned to seek that outside the status is a privilege, allowing me to see that uh, alien worlds can coexist and can inspire each other even, leading to also uh, connections that might eventually uh, actually end up 
uh, developing new disciplines altogether. Thank you.